Ladies and gentlemen, tell you all too when this is Con Ulrich. And I'm Angru, hello, hello, hello. And folks, we are back over here in Orchard North. You can remember, we were here earlier this week. Now, Rang, who are we meeting today on this particular uh, fun day? On left hand side in blue, we have Ginks playing as the Trophus S. Hitler Yugen Panzerism. Play with a Maverick Income, right hand side. We have Manu Militari playing as 26 Guards Infantry. We have a Vanguard Income. Uh, Hitler Jungend, I feel like we don't see these guys anywhere near enough, and at the same time, with a name like that, I feel like we see them all too often. <laughs> Yeah, definitely a real powerhouse back in SC44, but yeah, we haven't seen them a lot in SC2. I, I think they're pretty good division from what I've gathered, but um, they haven't really been out for that long. True. True. Well, again, the big thing they kind of mentioned about the Hitler Jungen over here is that they have the fanatical trait. You can see on my screen yeah. at the moment, they won't surrender. Yeah. So, Which... not surrendering, never giving up, never surrender. That works for Tim Allen in Galaxy Quest and the Hitler Jungen. Not exactly an elite <laughs> group to have, and I'm very sorry to Tim Allen for lumping them together, but... <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah they're, they're very good infantry. That fanatical trait means oh, it's such a huge boon. Yes. Because it means you have to kill them down to the last man, which, which buys you time, essentially. But one thing it does come at a cost, though, is that you have much lower availability. In terms of overall infantry numbers, if memory serves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think you do play in that regard. But also at the same time, you're a Panzer division. And you're not 5th SS Panzer, which has boatloads of infantry troops, where they might as well be an infantry division. No, these guys are quite good. Mm -hmm. Now we are seeing Men Militari over here with a couple of OBZA 76-2s on this kind of hillside. One thing I'm not really sure about, though, is why his SU-85 is maybe just a teeny bit further to the front. Yeah, I think he, he's keeping it in a reserve position for now, but now would be a good time to move it into a forward position to try and blow up that panther tank. Because exactly. that panther is a pain. Well, that's it's a main access kind of vehicle. I mean, if you take that out, you definitely slow down a huge chunk. And maybe that's why this KV-85 is coming in. Eh, maybe not. Yeah. Uh, Shremovicki, yeah, so the Shremovicki reinforcements in the north and Otomachiki has guard. Um... With three squads of peak runs, kind of maybe slightly aggressing onto those guard TPs, definitely some necessary assistance. Mm hmm. And Gink's bringing in some more infantry to try to take that northern town. And it's very close to taking that northern town, and he kind of needs to, because this is a 16 8 at the moment. And, uh, that's, <laughs> that's not good. As you can see, Manu has completely taken the central position, those flags, which has given him. Quite a good advantage. Well, a nice amount of control of absolutely nothing else. Mm hmm. Big concern here, though, is that with the Otomachikis in that town, they can just buy time. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna toss on smoke and run. Toss on smoke and run. You're not gonna get close to me. They're trying to bring in the armored vehicles here yeah, to take him out. And they'll be able to do it. Won't be without losses. Not considerable losses, but still able oh. to take out 233, which is more than enough to trade their lives for that. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely a great trade, yeah, for the flamethrower teams. Real real great use of smoke and kills the, another infantry squad. They're, they're really making really making their money back. Exactly. Not exactly what you want to be seeing if you mm -hmm. are in the twelfth SS. Uh, but the last couple of squads are going to get cleaned up. Um, but what will be left there? I mean, we have a Panther D, and we're going to have a Half-Track maybe inside there, and that's going to be about it. Yeah, and a Panther ain't going to help out in a town fight. No, no, they prefer to have their legs rather stretched over into the, the wilds, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, though, we are seeing now four squads of infantry being rushed into the fray. Um, the... The... Russians taking a far more Buddhist approach to this, uh, very lackadaisical in terms of reinforcements, which is surprising considering that theoretically they should be having the income advantage here. Yeah, it seems like he's spending it more on uh, armored fires, pa armored firepower, and airplanes rather than getting a lot of your basic, you know, anti tank guns, infantry spam out, as we usually see with a Vanguard income deck. 
What? I was actually quite surprised to get many more infantry reinforcements up until at Northern Town. Exactly. I mean, I, th I really thought these Ultima Chica and the Stromovikis were going to be put into the town to help hold it. Mm -hmm. But instead, we're seeing... Hugging the Northern line here. Yeah, god damn, that Northern base of firepower. That's... There's a lot of machine guns. True. True. But I guess on the plus side, to a certain extent, for many military, machine guns run out of ammunition awfully quickly. Uh, three more guard squads and KV-85, I think, being placed here to the north yet, to slowly maybe finally hold on to this. Um, but I think we're going to see, yep, PTRD holding fire until we get some up close and personal shots. If you turn into a bridge too far scenario, feel free to open up anytime, sir. Now, now, now's your time. Sure, they're they're, 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 really they're on top of you, buddy. <laughs> there we go. A long last. No. Okay, I thought he was gonna <laughs> fire, but. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I, I do like how he's got the uh, the CQC squad hugging the far northern side here, trying what? to sneak around behind enemy lines, but he really does need some frontline troops to try and stop his immediate push. Well, IL-2 does take out the P4 that was up there. Pretty damn good kill. I would say so. And he's swinging way back around to the south to go after somebody? Nah, he's not going to see anybody there. Um... The next great fight will be this chunked out bit that we have the pioneers moving on in. Question is, okay, I would really like to see him redeploy his guards by truck into that gap. He's got mm -hmm. to know he's not going to be holding the line like that too easily. There's some interesting decisions happening here. Worth repeating also, by the way, that the Hitler Jungend and the Pioneers don't have any committed AT. Which is a big deficiency of the yep. deck overall. Uh, Fogrolf comes in, gets a sight or rear shot on the KV-85 for the rockets, but not enough to get a kill. Those rockets really more for anti-infantry purposes, because they do have that napalm effect after they are dropped. We have a couple of mortars, and now we actually have an IG-18 or two starting to pound the southern approach here, but, nah, you know, that's again, that's that's not the major reason, that's not the main event here. Mm -hmm. The main event is uh, Joseph up here to the north, as one by one he's going to start losing his comrades, but not before he starts taking out everybody around him. Yeah. Two half-tracks are dead. Might get the third? Nope. One man left alive. Does he have the anti-tank rifle? Uh, that's Colonel Pavlov. No. Yeah, he left it at his house. God damn it, Pavlov. <laughs> oh, you ring a bell? He starts salivating. <laughs> um, ZSU actually getting brought on in. Surprised to see the ZSU getting called in so early, but that is such an effective anti-air platform that definitely makes sense to do it. Yeah. And by the same token, you know those machine guns that are so great? I guess the Ultima Chikis? Good freaking luck. Oh yeah, is that the men's get? 100 meter SMG scroll within 100 meters. And now they're doing that. They're doing that bloody job. Yeah, that is absolutely ghastly. Yeah. The, the one thing with, with Panzer Grenadiers and the whole. So they're not great in CQC. Yeah, I mean, do you have the Pioneer troops for Trove Assess? And I believe Stern Pioneers as well. But not many. You know, CQC fights like this is definitely a burden for Division. Unlike Russians, which used to get quite a decent amount of CQC scrotch. Indeed. Now down to the south, there's one squad behind it. Oh, is that two, three, two, three, one back over here, just kind of chilling. Um, just pounding against the guard DP squad. Looks like T34 East gonna settle the account pretty quickly. <laughs> but with that, yeah, that goes the entire south. Good luck getting on there. Yeah, if man, you can get some anti-tank guns into the southern forest. He, he's pretty much set in securing that area. He's got the infantry, the better infantry, yeah, in terms of CQC firepower, as I mentioned before. Uh, it's going to be hard for Ginks. I mean, he's a Panzer Division. His best bet is really to just try and push the center position with his heavy tanks. And he's got a couple of them on the field. Unfortunately, he doesn't seem to be too active with them. 
I think he's getting distracted by the North. His guard squads and T-34 support are going to push back his hard one gains here. Mm -hmm. Which is quite unfortunate because his attack was really well constructed, at least initially. Yeah. This, this is a hard map to use your Panthers and Tigers in the traditional sense. Because really so much of the battle comes down to those flanks. And those flanks are really dominated by infantry spam and cheap medium tank spam. Like T-34 76s, which uh, 26 guards have a decent amount of those cheapest tanks. Well, right now we are going to see some Pequots being thrown into the fray. Uh, luckily for him, there are no anti-tank guns here just yet. Unfortunately, also for Manu, is that had he put his infantry just about another couple hundred meters west, even with the mortars firing, as this huge infantry column comes on in, they would have been able to do quite a number on it. Yeah. And right now, I don't think they'll be able to do anything to it. I have a tier up north, almost knocking out the Panzer Grenadier scroll jam. And yeah, Manu, he has the northern flank, and he has the southern flank, which is pretty key to running this map, and he's 16-8, he's doing pretty good. Yep, indeed he is. You know, I'm looking at these this walking fire from this mortar down to the south. A rather aggressive firing plan, I don't think he's going to get even halfway through it. Mm -hmm. The IO-2, uh, I see knocked out the Panther tank here of a uh, strafing run. Really? I did. I was so focused down to the south, he's going to pay for it with his, tem for his temerity, I think? No. ZSU is going to kind of keep him up and running, and I actually wouldn't be surprised. Yep, there we go. Holy crap, yeah, that, that was a good investment going that into the aircraft gun. Well, there's two of them now as well, it's the second one being brought into the north, I'm sure it had quite a bit oh, to do geez. with that. Yeah, that's, that's some pretty heavy duty anti-air early on, and we've got another run coming in down south, so... The skies are definitely going to be looking red. One well, part of me is I just watched this Ultima Cheeky throw a couple of heat grenades and get absolutely pounded into dust. Oh yeah, yeah. That southern assault is... That's a lot of infantry. I mean, if you don't have the quality, you might as well bring in the quantity of Panzer Grenadiers to try to assault that hill. The interesting thing about it, though, is that while he... He, being the Ultima Cheeky squad, got taken out he slid up the entire thing. T-34 is going to rotate to completely shut down the road. And other than that, he also took out a squad of those fanatical troops. So how yep. can you hate on that? He, he held his ground for the motherland. True. But this might be just enough infantry to retake his southern position. And that would be a very good position for Ginks to be in. Because he really needs to try and capture one of these flanks back. True, but not if he's going to get this kind of concentration of with these Artemachikis and guards sitting right behind them. Yeah, and his mortar is out of ammunition. And, is... and that's the thing, yeah. Yeah. And I believe, at least we're getting a Comprati coming on in here, so I like that. Ooh, Panther takes out the T-34E. Oh, nice. But the infantry is falling like 10 pins. Um, once they get pinned, it doesn't matter how fanatical you are. Uh, you don't fire back. Nope. And I think with these, the Sharon coming out in, that's going to be more than enough. If nothing else, it'll retard the progress until better troops, more troops can be brought on in. It's going to run off the half tracks into fire in position, which will definitely give it a bit of firepower, never mind. But the other half tracks decide to take a little bit of a detour. And, well, half tracks are lovely, but so are anti tank rifles. Well, now this SDK has said the 251 Mark 7. Mm -hmm. And he's going to die so quickly, which is such a shame. You, you never see this guy, and he's going to go down almost without anything, really. I know. He's such a cool gun. Well, here we go. IL-2 comes in. Doesn't even have to shoot. In fact, no, he's going to make a gun run on the Panther. Ooh, this is super important. Ooh. Up north, we have a, uh, an old friend of ours, Khan. Master Wittmann. Okay, mm -hmm. so does he make it to face it? No. That's my bet right now. He's gonna die in five minutes. You're probably right there. IL-2 makes a run on the south on that panther. 
And luckily, he does not see him. Mm hmm. Lost line of sight, just in the nick of time, keeping that pan for life for now. But even. I mean, Ginks have managed to get a decent initial push down south, but he still hasn't completely cleared that forest. So this time he's deciding to. I thought he was going to bypass it, but he's going to be unloading his troops and just attack moving into that town. Or farmstead, I should say. It's not, not really a town. I have to come back in. He fires 26 shells into that uh, panther. Panther is quite messed up. And I imagine this IL-2 might potentially buy it. Got a fucker off his right on him. And there we go. Yes, we got a central push uh, being kicked up here. With some more hands going to do play. Dusty going to be trying to take up. That flag where the Ultimate Cheeky is, and this would be a really good position for Ginks. There's not really much in the center, and that could be two very easy flags that he can capture. True, it's entirely possible. Um, I, I would caution to say though, there was still a couple of KV 85s and a M42 mm -hmm. engaged and take out the 233, so that, that's very quickly killed. Yep. He's also made the mistake of moving his IG-18 and Pack 40 off the hill. Yes. I think it's probably like a click arrow because he's just attack moving into the farmstead. So that's, that's not that's not good. You kind of want to be in, under the cover of forests and trees and all of that. But even then, they keep back the KP-85. Yeah, for the moment, true. For the moment. And I think you're right. We're going to see an attempted rupture in the center here. But... All, you know, Menu's got to do is hold off another three minutes. And I think he yeah. can do it. I really think he can do it. One thing he's got to do, though, is he's got to go and make sure he's got uh, a lot more infantry down to the south. Because if the Hitler Jungen is able to bring numbers to bear, that's going to be a bit of, an, a, bit of a hassle, to say the least. Yeah, the Guard TV squad is now thoroughly outnumbered, and yeah, he really needs some more reinforcements down south now. And the other tree squad here is not going to be enough. And it doesn't seem to be the case so far, so this is really Gink's time to shine. Try to take the south, try to take the center during these raining minutes of the B phase, where he still has loads of money. There's a Fark Wolf in the meantime going to get. Uh... Probably taken out by the ZSU, so be very surprised if he makes that alive. Yeah, he seems pretty forked. Yeah, and there we go. Yeah. There's one way to skin a wolf. Uh, I mean, also the North and Washington, another, <laughs> another push coming on through Hitler going and being thrown in again with more Pete Grins. Yeah, I do like when the Fokker Wolf crashed out as he crashed into a squad of Pantagon of Days and slightly, like, gave him some suppression. Dude, I'd, I'd be shocked if a plane came down on top of me. Mm -hmm, especially if it's one of our own. Yeah, it's like usually you expect your guy to not want to go and try to run into you, but, uh, you know, yeah. different strokes. This I think the central push is going to get a little bit harder now because we've got this ISU and SU-85 in the forest, and that can put down some pretty scary firepower. It certainly can. Now we're seeing right now, ooh, Pack 40 is quite toasted. And a, an infantry column being brought in by guards in the north. Interesting decision. Why is he's that, do you think? He's trying to take that northern town back. Yep. Which I can, I can agree with the sentiment, but the path in the idea, he really should try to go from the northern end to get to a town rather than the southern end, because he's going to run into an infantry support gun and a tiger tank. Unless he can kill them. Which he might do, because he has an IS-1. Well, I'm surprised he's not moving forward there. There is Chrysov. He's going on in. Yeah. Go Vasily. Not for nothing, I really need to do a lot more research into the particular aces that are in here other than Mr. Vitman. Yeah, who so is same here. I have no not idea dead. Guys are. Final seconds of phase B before we get into phase C, and Vitman is surprisingly alive. 
I know, right? I think if Ritwan survives for five minutes, you do, you, you should get a Steam achievement. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe we could hard code that in somewhere. Uh, Guard DPs being brought on in are actually able for the moment to get on through, but I, I don't think it's because of their own particular gumption. It's more just like raw damn luck. Yeah. And just... Yeah, Manu has a really nice base of firepower on that hill now. And that's going to give him enough cover to get into said town. Now, the fortunate thing, though, is they're not able to actually engage that tiger with any kind of consistency. Yes, we have a couple of shells going way down range, but then they start shifting over with these SMGs. Mm -hmm. Ooh, another IL-2 goes down. Did they nerf the durability of those? I uh, no, I think it's just the Fokker Wolves have a crap ton of guns. Because they got the, the Fokker Wolves have like, what, 4 or 20 mils? I think guns. so, yeah. So, yeah, that thick armor ain't gonna save you. You know, forgive me, but there's a P4 and a Tiger and, you know, Pitman over here. Take us a KV-85. Guys, adjust your fire. There's a more primary target here. We're starting to get a little bit of a uh, tank battle here across the center. Mm -hmm. And Whitman is probably going to come out looking rather ugly on this one. Mm -hmm. yeah, for fortunately, in 26, it's not a great tank division. They got a lot of heavy armor with the KVs and IS runs, but not a whole lot of actual firepower. Really, their big heavy hitter is the SU 85, but. That's a pretty easy target to kill, all things considered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now, yeah, man is going to realize that discretion is a better part of Valor, and decide to fall back, which is definitely the best case. With, with 26 guards, you really want to use your tanks in a defensive position, mainly as fire support more than anything, especially with the KV ones. Well, and right now too, he's got to hold up for three minutes, and that's the ball game right there. So, yeah. But Ginks well, over here, he so, yeah. well, I was going to say, Ginks definitely has potential to come back, but the fly that he's got to take has got to be that one in the town. Yeah. I mean, he just needs one flag, and looking all over the map, the, the, center, the town is going to have to be it, I think, or maybe at farms that are just south of the northern town. But he doesn't have any extra infantry, he just has lots of tanks. And tanks are cool, they're really cool, especially if you're a Panzer Division. Surprise, surprise, a Panzer Division to have Panzers. But nonetheless, what I'm ruffling on about is that you need infantry to take the positions. Well, now we see things like this Yacht Panzer is going to be one shot, one kill. Oh, damn, that was close. Yeah. And in a straight up fight, the Yacht Panzer does have a pretty good chance to get a Series 85. Mm hmm. Slow down, we're coming in real handy here, and ooh, takes him out. Yeah. Last couple of minutes, though, unless something magical happens, and I don't know that I'm really seeing any kind of miracle that would see our, let's say, German brethren coming out ahead. Yeah, I... It's going to come down to this town, so... And he does have the fire support here, he's throwing in everything, throwing in Rickman and the Pangers. He's got the Panzer Grenadiers coming in. He this... needs to capture his place and he only has a minute and 25 seconds to do so. He's gonna get bogged down, there's no way in hell he takes this. Two two trucks down. Oh no, unload, unload! <laughs> eject, rookie, eject. <laughs> I think you're right, I think he's gonna be a little bit bogged down, yeah. And, and that's the unfortunate thing. Again, like you said, the armor has been so excellent over here from Ginks. Mm -hmm. But the infantry play has just been a touch underneath what it needed to be. Yeah. And as we know from pretty much all bloody SU2 1v1s, it just, it just comes down to infantry spam, guys. Just take as many strokeys or pandagonadiers or whatever you can get in huge numbers. As many as you can. Because that's what you need. Just throw them in the front line. They're going to be your recon, they're going to be your ground takers, and yeah. And they're yeah. going to be your meat shields. There's a reason we have them. There's the reason they're called PDI. It's poor bloody infantry, not poor, you know, poor beautiful infantry. They're meant to get it's shot. so close. 
Yes, he is. A flag. But he is. I mean, the 233 and the Tiger Fira. I mean, they have enough firepower to kill Cherno, but Cherno's hidden. They can't do anything about it. True. True, and now we have one thing as well. We have that guard DP who can't be seen either. Mm -hmm. But well done to Manu. Uh, had this yeah. game gone on in maybe another five or ten minutes, he probably would have pushed. But he pulled yeah, it out for right now. I, I felt like Ginks was starting to pull back or we'll pull into it a bit more. And it was somewhat close to Nazi taking some, some territory. But really bled too hard too early. Alright, Ayo to love over here. A couple of kills. Ayo two, several kills. I mean, you're not seeing outside of that one infantry squad anything too amazing. In fact, I think that was... I think that was the hero man who took out, you know, three or four half-tracks in the southern I think so. complex. But the other than that, is... it was just, it was just slowing guys down. Mm-hmm. Whitman actually got two kills and a Cherno squad. And he survived the entire match. Yeah, exactly. I'm actually it's surprised to see that both hero units actually survived. I know, and, and the Russian one was brought out immediately at the start of the match, so... Good on him. Exactly. Just shocking. Really, really shocks me to know that it's possible to keep hero units alive. I know. Uh, but hey, uh, any final thoughts for today? Uh, none this week, no. Okay, folks, in that case, then, until next time, remember to always tip your waitresses. Uh, but until next week, I'm Con Ulrich. I'm Andrew. Take it easy.